In this video, I want to talk about depth first search. And depth first search or DFS is a way we can search through a tree. So make sure you've checked out the tree data structure video. And it's a very important algorithm and it's actually used as a foundation for pretty much any of the other algorithms related to trees. Um, so that's why I want to do a special video on this. So the depth first search and also there's breadth first search, which we'll cover in the next video. These are two approaches that you can use to traverse through a tree structure. And they're very useful when solving tree related algorithm problems. So right here, you can see we got a tree and this is a binary tree. And we've got the root node here of one. And then one has two children, two and three. So in a depth first search, basically we start at the root node here and then we look at its children. We start off by looking at the left children here. And as you could imagine, that child could possibly have other children of itself. So what we can do is we can go down deeper again until we get to the end of the branch there. And then that's one way we can search through. Now this is in contrast with breadth first search, which sort of starts here and then it looks at the children of the, of the root node and then it looks at the next slot and then it looks at the next slot like that. So depth first search is better if you're starting at a node and you need to traverse far away from it, deep down. So if you know that you need to dive down to the leaf, for example, you'd want to use depth first search. But if you know that the node you're looking for is maybe somewhere near the top, maybe it's the two, then you'd probably opt for breadth first search because when you go to the next layer there or the next level, that's immediately going to be in there for you. And I want to actually code up a tree because we haven't seen that yet. And we're going to use TypeScript to do this. And then we're going to use our depth first search method that we discussed. And we're going to create an algorithm for that. And that's going to be great because it's going to show us about recursion and traversing through a tree. But first we need to create a class and a tree is composed of nodes. So we need to have a class for each one of those nodes, which we're going to call a tree node. And a tree node, it has a value, which is just going to be equal to a number. And it also has children. Now in the tree that we saw, um, you know, it was a binary tree, so there's more than one. Uh, child, so there's two children, um, but this data structure, it basically refers to itself um, as an array, because if you think about the first node, it had a value of one, and then it had two children, and the two children was two and three, and those children also have children of its own, and the children keep on repeating until there's no children uh, there. So basically what we can say is we can say, well, and let me just, okay, so I got my prettier on. Um, so if I create a constructor here and we take in the value, which we know is a number, and we take in the children, which is going to be a tree node, and it's an array of tree nodes, and if they're not defined, we'll just set it equal to an empty array here. And then what we can do in the constructor, so when we instantiate a tree node, we can simply say, well, the value is equal to the value here. And I think there's a TypeScript shortcut for this anyway, so you don't have to necessarily type this out if you're using TypeScript, but just for the people using JavaScript, um, you can do something like that. So basically that's a tree node. So how would we write the tree that we saw before? So essentially what we can do here 
is we can have our um firstly we we point towards the root of the node because the root of the node it has children and it's sort of like a nested structure like that so to point to a tree we point to the root node of the tree and then we can simply use our constructor that we've created here to instantiate an object of the tree node and then we pass in a one here for the first value and then that has two children of its own so then we can create another tree node and this is going to have the value two and if we create a another one it's going to have a tree node of three so the first the root of the trees at the top has the value one and then it has two children so we can create um, this new tree node here and and then we'll need a comma there then two it also had children of its own so um, we can just sort of copy this here and it had a child of four and it also had a child of five and then we can copy this here and actually this is in an array here so let me copy this here and then three on the right hand side or one two three and then four five and then it had six and seven so the children of three is six and seven and this is the data structure that you would use to represent a tree and in particular this is a binary tree because we have two elements here either two or none of course you could have a ternary tree if you had three here or a n array tree if you had n number of children here but essentially what we want to do is we want to traverse through this tree using the depth first search approach and what we're going to do is we're just going to say let's say we had some target number we want to find so let's say that we wanted to look for the number six for example we can have a target value of six and then we're going to have a function here so I'm going to call this um, DFS for depth first search and it takes the tree and then it's going to recursively look at the next um, node going downwards so depth first and if it finds the value it will return true if it doesn't it will return false so there's variations of this you might not be always looking for a number to find but um, you might be trying to look through and push to an array or something like that or a stack um, but in this example we're going to try and find a target number and then use the depth first search to be able to find that so as mentioned it takes a um, it takes the root node so what we want to do is we just want to say um, well basically we just want to log out if it was found or not so just to make this clearer here this is going to return a boolean and it's going to take the root node which is a tree node type so the root node is a tree node and then the um, value that we're looking for needs to be there so that's just going to be a integer or a number so we can have the target value as being a number here so then what we want to do is we just want to try and find the value and we're just returning true or false whether we found it or not so we just pass in this root node here and then we also just pass in our target value which we've defined here as six okay so we've created the shape of our function we define what we're doing we define the data structure so basically this root node it's going to start off by being a tree node and we'll come back to this in a second because it can also be null and what we're going to do is essentially what we want to do 
is say if the root if the root node's value is going to be equal to the target what we want to do is we just want to return true and I might just put another equal here if that's equal to the target value we're just going to return true so if it turns out that we um, if if the um, value is going to be equal to target value, then we return true. But how do we, that's only true for the root node. How do we sort of cycle to the deeper and deeper nodes of it? So what we can do here is basically we can have a for loop and I'm going to use this for of here. So for the child um, of the um, root node, Uh, children so we're going to have two so this is going to loop through both of its children um, what we want to do is we want to say um, if and this is where we're going to do some recursive action here and we're going to see how it searches um, by depth um, but basically since we know that this is returning true here and if we cycle through we might want to have a check so let's say we're on the next since we're doing a recursive thing we need to have a break um, if we get all the way to the bottom so basically if we cycle through all of our nodes uh, using depth first search we get to the last um, node in the chain and it's not the target value then we know that the root node here uh, is going to be equal to null so that means we can return false. So what this means is we have a, and then that should always have a value if it makes it pass. So if we find a target value while we're searching, um, we return true. If we search through the whole chain and we don't find anything, we return false. Um, now we need to actually implement the recursive logic um, that's going to um, actually allow us to go through the depth. And I might just have a fallback here to say, if you don't find the target, we're just going to return false here. So as we mentioned, we're starting on the root node and then we're going to go to its children, but we don't want to look at all of its children straight away. Even though we're looping through its children, we're going to do a recursive call to itself and then that's going to go to the um, top of the core stack and then it's going to continue to go to the top of the core stack until you make your way down to the depth and then if it's not found then you know you can go up and then back down again um, so let's just implement this here so basically if you call the depth first search function and remember if it's these cases here we're returning um, but basically if the depth first search um, function um, if you pass in the child and then also the target value that's going to recall this here and then it's going to say well if the child is null Nothing was found, return false. Otherwise, it's equal and then it was equal to true. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue to loop through. So if that is the case, what we can do is we can just return true here. So that's pretty much the algorithm there. And let's just go over that again because I know we implemented this logic last. But essentially, we're starting at the beginning of the tree here. So we have this root node here, which has this value of one here. And for that root node, we know that it's defined, it's not null, and it's not equal to six. 
So what we need to do is we need to loop through its children. So one has the uh, two children here. So it's got the child two and three here. And then for those children, we're doing a recursive um, call here to itself. Because if it gets past there, then it's gonna go uh, down to false here. Um, so it's first child here, that's gonna be two. And then you go through that logic again, and then it's gone down to the two, which is the left. And then the first child of two is gonna be four. And then it's gonna to go to four, it's still not six. And then four doesn't have any children. So then what it does is it it's, um, stops going down the chain, which was the depth first search part. And then it goes back to this other child here, which is the three. And then the three has two children, six and the seven. So it starts in the six. And then eventually you get to the um, this condition here, which will be true. Um, now you could get to the condition that, you know, it wasn't found at all, in which case it's returning false here or the root nodes null is returning false. So let's just go ahead and see if this works for us. So what we're expecting here is for the target value of six, um, we're expecting a true result. So if I just run the TypeScript compiler on this file and then run node, we see true there. And just to confirm, if we put that to 6.7 and then we save that file, um, we see that that returns false. So that's step first search. Very important to understand for any tree related problem that you're going to do. In the next, um, in the next video, we're going to discuss BFS.